Hello, Vera. My name is Jasmine Ohawa from Loreto Convent Valley Road. I'm in Form 4, and with me is my colleague. My name is Ruth Ukwara in Form 4. Welcome to Science Hub. Today we'll be discussing energy changes in physical and chemical processes. This is the second topic in Book 4, Chemistry. My fellow colleague will start us off. In this topic, we'll be discussing about energy. What is energy? Energy is the ability to work. There are different types of energy. For one, we have kinetic energy, potential energy, chemical energy, heat energy, and electrical energy. Many physical and chemical changes are accompanied by energy changes, which by the end of this topic, you'd be able to familiarize yourself to this. We will now move to types of reactions. There are two types of reaction. The first one is endothermic reaction. What is an endothermic reaction? This is a reaction that is accompanied by absorption of heat. We will now move to a demonstrated example of this. We will have a 250 ml beaker. We will wrap it in tissue. The rubber band is used to hold the tissue in place. We will now measure 100 ml of distilled water in a measuring cylinder. The water will be added to the beaker. So in this reaction, we would like to know what happens when ammonium nitrate dissolves in water. We will now record the temperature of water. Um, it's 23 degrees and we'll record it in our books. So we have 23 degrees as the initial temperature. We will now take two spatula fulls of ammonium nitrate and add them to the beaker. The solution will now be stirred using the thermometer and we will now record the final temperature attained. Give this about a minute and read off the temperature. Um, the temperature is 20 degrees. So our final temperature What do we note? We note that the temperature lowers it after, the, after you add ammonium nitrate to it. Yes, the temperature is lowered in an endothermic reaction. This is because heat energy is absorbed. Therefore, the product has more heat than the resulting solution. We will now move to exothermic reaction, which is a second type of reaction. An exothermic reaction is accompanied by production of heat. We will also have a demonstrated example of this reaction. The experiment is the same. We will take another dry beaker, wrap it in tissue paper and fasten it with a rubber band. We will measure 
100 milliliters of water in a measuring cylinder. and it will be added to the beaker. For this reaction, we will like to see what happens when sodium hydroxide is dissolved in water. So we will add two, sp two spatula full of sodium hydroxide after we have recorded the initial temperature of water. Um, the initial temperature is at 23 deg degrees Celsius. We have 23 degrees Celsius as our initial temperature. We will now add the solid. Two spatula folds. The solution will be stirred using the thermometer for about one minute and the final temperature will be recorded. The final temperature is at 26 degrees Celsius. What did we note? We noted that the temperature rose once we added sodium hydroxide pellets. This is very correct. In an exothermic reaction, temperature rises after the solid dissolves in, a wa in the water. This is because exothermic reaction emits heat. So as we can see here, in the endothermic reaction, we started with 23 degrees Celsius of water. When we added the solid, we ended up with 20 degrees Celsius of the solution. Where in an exothermic reaction, we started with 23 degrees Celsius of water. When we added the solid, we got 26 degrees Celsius of the solution. This experiment can be illustrated in an in energy level diagram. What is an energy level diagram? This is a diagram that shows relative energies of products and reactants in a reaction. My colleague will draw the two diagrams for the two experiments. For the first diagram, we'll start with the endothermic reaction for ammonium nitrate. So we see that when the solid is dissolved in the water, we get aqueous ammonium nitrate and the energy is, is increased. Therefore, we conclude that the solid absorbs heat and therefore the temperature of the solution in the end is lowered. We will now move to an exothermic energy level diagram.
this reaction concludes that when sodium hydroxide has been added to, has been dissolved to water it loses it loses energy to the surrounding therefore the product's energy is lower we will now move to enthalpy enthalpy is heat content in a chemical it is denoted by the letter h It is not possible to determine enthalpy of a chemical reaction. However, the change in enthalpy can be determined. The change in the enthalpy is denoted by delta H. The triangle represents change. Enthalpy change, delta H, is equals to the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactions. It is usually indicated at the end of a balanced equation. This is a simple chemical equation of methane reacted by oxygen, which produces carbon four oxide gas and water. And at the end, we indicated the enthalpy change of this reaction. Because the enthalpy change is negative, we can conclude that this reaction is exothermic. Without even explanation, you can already see that the Units for calculating enthalpy change is kilojoules per mole. We will now move to bond breaking and bond formation in physical and chemical processes. Atoms in elements and compounds are held together by chemical bonds. During a reaction, the substances have to break their bonds and form new bonds as constituent atoms recombine in the new substances. Bond breaking is, a, is an endothermic process. This is because the atom has to absorb the energy in the surrounding in order to be able to break the bonds. Therefore, it's an endothermic process. Bond formation is an exothermic process. This is because the atoms release energy when they are forming new bonds, therefore exothermic process. We will now take an example of heating ice. When we heat ice, the heat absorbed is converted to kinetic energy, which is used to break bonds. When the temperature attained is zero degrees Celsius, there is no rise in temperature. This is because the heat absorbed is used to break the bonds. And this heat is known as molar heat of fusion. After the, the bonds are break broken and the ice changes its state to liquid, the heat rises again. Now the heat absorbed is used to is converted to kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is used to raise the temperature of the liquid until it needs to evaporate. At the stage at which at which it evaporates. There is no further temperature increase until the bonds are broken. This is known as molar heat of vaporization. Molar heat of fusion and molar heat of vaporization can be used to estimate the strength of intermolecular forces holding the particles together. Heat of reaction is therefore bond breaking energy minus bond formation energy. This marks the end of our discussion. Thank you for watching. My name is Ruth Rukwaro and my colleague Jasmine Ohawa 